I think the Cowboys have finally entered limbo. Where they're yeah. too yeah. good to tank, but they're not good enough yeah. to do anything. Yeah. The only Are... good thing on their team, I would say, is Micah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Washed Athlete Podcast and another episode of This Week in Sports. But this will probably be the last episode of officially This Week in Sports as we transition our podcast to a full sports podcast. So if you've been listening to all our other stuff, you will no longer see as much live content. You'll pretty much just see sports stuff. So um, we're excited for the transition. We're really passionate talking about sports, and that's kind of how we're going to go for the rest of the podcast. If you're new around here, we are the Washed Athlete Podcast. We are a group of college guys. And we're just talking about sports, having a good time. If you like what you see, please drop a comment, like, subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And otherwise, we're going to get right into the state of the NFL address. This is going to be an eight-part series where we kind of spend each episode talking about the division, kind of going through the draft picks, like what, what do we like, what do we think their needs are. We're not going to get into specific um, draft players. We're not, we're not going to talk about arm length and jumping speed. We might, <laughs> yeah. we might get into a little bit of that, but we're not really evaluating prospects here. We're t- picking out team needs and what we think they should kind of do with their picks. And additionally, talking about what their season outlook yeah. is and whatnot. And today we are going to start with the NFC East. This is our division. First division in NFL yeah, last yeah, season, right. apparently. NFC East. Ooh. Yep. Um, Peter is a Giants fan. Raj and I are Eagles fans. So we have a lot of ties to this division. Fan. And we all yeah, hate yeah. the Cowboys. You're a Cowboys fan. So um, we're just going to kind of get into it, starting with the Eagles. The Eagles, as we all know, Super Bowl. Make a Super Bowl appearance. It will never be too soon to bring it up. Brings it down 30, 35, 32. Um, so they're in a really good shape, I think, this offseason. I think there's no other way to slice it. They're not losing too much of the talent. They should be back. I'm sure they're close to the odds to win the Super Bowl next year. So not a lot to do. But the biggest thing on the Eagles' mind right now is the Jalen Hurts contract. Yes. $50 million. You got to get ready for it. That's what you think? Fifty. Yep. Howie's being very quiet about it, but I know it's going to be a massive contract. It's going to hit around 50 maybe a little yeah. under. Who yeah. knows? Maybe over at the Eagles somehow find the yeah. money. Yeah. But – I mean, besides Hurts, we know how great he is. The fix, the things we need to fix, offense is still amazing. I say find some replacements like slowly on and start training. Uh, the center, what's the center's name we drafted? Uh, Cam Jurgens. Yeah, start slowly getting Jurgens into rotation just in case Kelsey ends up retiring or playing one more season. And I mean, Lane Johnson, I think he has another season in him. I don't know what he's said yet, but the rest of the O line solid still. I'm not worried about the offense. It's the defense because we're losing yeah. a lot of people. And I mean, I don't know about you, Justin, but there's two people on defense I still want to keep, and it's Reddick and CJ. Yeah, those are the two people I think the Eagles will end up going with trying to keep. Um, Bradbury. Let him um, walk. Bradbury, he's a good cornerback. Let him walk. Let him walk. He's gonna get. He's gonna get good money to another team. Yeah. I think the Vikings are a common team that could pick him yeah, up. Um, but he's just he's expendable, and we'll kind of get into their picks in a little bit with ten and thirty. But those just feel spots that the Eagles can get a cornerback or early in the second round. Um, where you, you don't need to keep Bradbury. Sidney Gardner Johnson was great, led the league in interceptions. Um, I say keep him. He's been amazing at say. Yeah, I mean, he led the league in interceptions and he had a lacerated kidney for the last couple of weeks yeah. of the season. Yeah. Um, you definitely keep him. And then Reddick, um, second in the league Redick. in sacks, um, made some big time plays in the playoffs, and you, you keep him. Mm-hmm. So those are the two players you keep on defense. Hargrave's also up for a contract, so we'll see what happens with him. But he might be a walk, especially with Jordan Davis kind of going yeah. into his second year in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, but a little bit nervous about the Jalen Hurts contract. I, I think I think they're going to be tough. It's going to be tough to pay him fifty million dollars because he's pretty much got one season of a good body of work. It's not like he had, his year last year was not anything is, special. Is he still his, how many years does he have in his rookie contract? This would be his last year. Last year. Off. This is yeah. We'll see because I also know Jalen seems like one of those stand up kind of guys who may just like say he's not next taking season. a team friendly deal. I'm going to tell you this right well, now. He's you not. never know. Rush the NFL PA is not going to let him. Mm-hmm. You're right. They're yeah, not right. Yeah, I, I think I think it'll just be interesting because you. I can see a world in which the Eagles are like, we can't pay you fifty million dollars. You had one good season. Um, I mean that is fair. Like, I mean, give him forty nine. Yeah, <laughs> give him forty five. Yeah, but I'm just concerned that's going to be a situation where like they don't want to pay him. I, and I don't know the right answer. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. I would probably just pay him if I was Howie. But mm-hmm. I also could be like, yeah, fifty million dollars is a lot of money to tie up to a quarterback. Um, and I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to take a ten like ten year deal like Patrick Mahomes mm-hmm. took. Um, so I could see an argument for letting him play his fifth year and either franchising him afterwards <laughs> or signing for an extension. Oh, we're pulling the Lamar card, and, now, and that's where I was going to go. <laughs> oh, I don't no. want, part of the reason I don't want to do that is because that 
the Lamar Jackson situation. We'll get into it when we oh, do our state no. of the state of the NFL address for the. Just wait till the NFL game edits where it yeah. says soon. It hurts as in like a Commanders jersey or yeah. something. Oh my god! god. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. So I think it's a really interesting proposition because I don't think Jalen Hurts has proved he's worth fifty million dollars a year, but also I don't think you can just let the Lamar Jackson situation go on. Exactly. Um, so you know, how we how he's keeping very silent about this. So we'll we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, I think Jalen Hurts is happy playing in Philadelphia. He's <laughs> mm-hmm. he's not gonna get a better situation in the league right now. He has two top receivers. Devontae Smith had a great year, and I don't think it's advantageous for Jalen Hurts to leave the Eagles. So I don't think they're they're being loud about it. It's advantageous for Lamar to leave the Ravens. They really yeah. don't have a great offense and great personnel around him. So His when receivers they, are Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins. Yeah. Why are we talking about the AFC North? I don't know, but I'm just making the comparison. <laughs> we're just, we're just saying how Lamar is like he's okay. down bad. It's advantageous for Lamar to possibly yes. leave the Ravens. Both it's not financially. Yeah. yeah, it's not advantageous. I don't Hertz yeah. couldn't go to a yes. better situation. Yeah. So um hopefully get the deal done. But with the tenth and thirtieth pick, the Eagles are in a unique situation where you're like the second best team in the league and so and you have a top ten pick in a draft that's kind of front loaded in my and opinion. You Saints. And I mean, yeah, the Saints just... They really wanted Olave, I guess. Yeah, they wanted Olave, and Olave's been great, but num- number 10 is a very interesting spot for the Eagles because they don't, like, they don't get the top 10 talent. They don't get, like, the top, top talent. Like, but you gu- still get a guy. Like, guys like, guys like Tyree Wilson, Tyree Wilson, or uh, Ty- I forget his last name, but he plays for Texas Tech. Edge are really good. Yeah. Um, Peter Skronsky, like, oh, offensive yeah. tackle for Northwestern, gone. really good. Yeah. Devin Witherspoon, who's a cornerback that's been mocked. 100%. He's probably gone, yeah. and, like, so you've got some really good guys that could fit needs for the Eagles that are going to go in the first nine picks, which is going to make 10 a very interesting spot for them. And I wonder where they're going to go. I wonder how he trades up or down from it. The Eagles have been proven. I know. My thoughts is that we're going to let Sanders walk. Like he had a pretty good season this You're year. not drafting B. John Robinson. Not a 10. Not a 10. <laughs> B. John at 10. Nah. I don't know. It's like... We know how we either it's going to be a master class or a disaster class. That is true. We don't know. That disaster is class is drafting a wide receiver, and I don't think they're going to do that. Well, well no, no. Well, I think my my thing is, I think if one of Bijan or uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba is available at thirty, I think you take them. Mm-hmm. And if both are available, I think you take Jackson Smith. Well, at thirty, yeah, yeah. Ten's very interesting. I feel like mm. it's hard to say what we're going to do with ten because, like, we have the spots we need to fill. But at the same time, like we still have the coach. It's just gonna play. It's, it's just gonna play out. Whatever. It's just gonna be best available. Yeah, and yeah, that's. And I think that's what they should do. I think if they have guys like uh, Brisey who plays interior defensive line, you beef up your line. Yeah. Edge rushers, yeah. beef up your edge. If play, cornerback yeah. safety, like beef up that position. Like yeah. I, obviously, don't draft a wide receiver ten. Oh yes, no. You'll you'll be, don't need you'll, any more wide. You'll receivers. be reaping. I, I know that they might fall in love with Jay and, Jalen Hyatt as a speed guy to take the top off the defense. I don't think you. That's you're reaching for him at ten. Yeah. I don't um, think so. And whatnot. So I think the That's Eagles nice. are. I think the Eagles are just going to become a lot better of a team through the draft. And I think the thirty is interesting because I could see them really making some movement to come up for a prospect mm-hmm. they like, or to come back of another person. Like, I would honestly say for for where you're at right now, I would if I was how I would look into seeing what teams would want to trade up mm-hmm. because the thing right now is that you're going to have like. Because it's going to be Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, and then that third quarterback is going to be a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't What's know if the it's going to be Kentucky. It's going to be we'll Levis, Levis, or it's going to be Anthony guy, Richardson. Yes, yeah. or it's going to be the guy from Florida. So then you're looking at the QB four. That's yep. where it's going to get a little bit weird, and mm-hmm. that's where it kind of like teams that are like a little unsure about their quarterbacks that might be further on in the draft yep. might be kind of trying to. Just peek well, that's a, that's a great draft. Exam. Is April right? April like mm-hmm. mid-April. We still have Carr. Rogers, we yep. still have all those. So a lot of dominoes to fall. That's the thing. We, it, it is just like a wait. Well, I think yeah. when you look at teams like Detroit, the Commanders, who have That's okay quarterback saying. situations, but they could improve at the spot. Um, Detroit's picking somewhere like seventeen. Commanders I don't think are picking Detroit's at sixteen. Drafting QB, I think they're. Jared they, Goff is still. Jared Goff's been playing yeah, very well. Yeah, no, oh, not very well. but I'm saying like they might be interested in moving up to get a guy like Anthony Richardson. That's what. I'm saying. And they might need to get to ten for that. And That's like Peter, like you were saying. Yeah. Eagles slide back to 16, 17, still get a good player, get some draft competition. Because then if you don't, if nobody offers you a good trade, all right, fine. Oh, no, twist our arm. We will draft a top 10 yeah, player yeah. at 10. Oh, no. Yeah, that's but, really bad. Yeah, but, like, I mean, it would be really good to be able to then, like, if you could, like, switch ones with somebody who's For sure. going to be ass and then get some more draft yeah. picks as well. Like, why not? Yeah. So, in, for, in terms of team needs, I think when looking at the team, I think beefing up the cornerback spot when you leave James Bradbury, so whether that's 
bringing a guy like Bonte Maddox back into the rotation as mm-hmm. QB CB2. If that's drafting Christian Gonzalez, Devin Witherspoon, yep. drafting a guy in the third round who might be decent at cornerback. I think cor- depth is what Yeah, I think cornerback is definitely a spot you look for yeah. in the draft if you're the Eagles, whether that's second, third round. Like, don't reach on a guy, but yeah. I think you look for that spot. And other team needs – Um, just flushing at your running back spot. I think Bijan is interesting at number 30. If you just want a cheap running back for four years and you're like, well, we might Why just – yeah, We might – Well, Gainwell's played – Pretty well last well, year. Robinson's yeah, well, obviously, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, 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 I like getting well as a running back. I, but I think we'll it's really interesting if you're the Eagles and you say, "Hey, we got this number ten overall pick, pretty much for free. Um, we, we went to the Super Bowl and we have another free ten pick. We're going to draft a great guy there, and we're going to draft Bijan Robinson, let him ride with us for four years, and then just not pay him a new contract. Just let him walk. Yeah. Yeah. just let him walk, and that's what they want to do. Let him develop and let some other NFL team give him a big contract. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think that's. I think it's a very interesting route to go. He's, mm-hmm. He'd obviously help your team a lot. Um, yeah, because you're because tra- your your like championship window is right now. Yeah, yeah. Like your team is stacked, ready to yeah. go right now. After that, uh, I don't yeah. know. But, That's a later problem. <laughs> exactly. What yeah, we like now is, is it's go time right now. Yep. And then for season outlook, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Super, Super Bowl, Bowl bus. bus. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, moving away from that, the coaching scenarios now we've changed. Yep. Coaching scenario is very interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we have. Offensive coordinator Shane Steichen can go to the Colts, and we have defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon go to the Cardinals. Now, yeah, supposedly that, that, that second down. quarter collapse, Ooh, I'm gonna yeah, need that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you if you ask the Eagles players, Sidney Gardner Johnson and yeah. um, I forget who else tweeted about it. Good thing Jonathan Gannon's yeah. gone because yeah. they they're not very happy CK, about that. He had a deleted tweet or a private message or yeah, something. No, it was a deleted tweet, and deleted. he goes, "Man, you didn't call anything. What are you talking yeah. about? It's like you didn't call, you didn't say anything. You just didn't put us in position." Yeah. yeah. So I think that's very interesting to look from the defensive end. Um, Our O coordinator, I'm fine with. We promoted from within. He's not QB coach or something. Yeah, yeah. We promoted Brian from Johnson. Within. He was training yeah. under Steichen. That's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. The defensive coordinator, on the other hand, is interesting. It's very Did interesting. Yeah. Sean Desai. Yeah. yeah. What was he for? He was D coordinator for the Bears. Mm-hmm. Under Matt Eberflus. Yeah. Flus. And now um, he's D coordinator for the Eagles. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it. It'll be interesting. I really like what Sirianni said, and this is what like I'll be happy with the Eagles. Sirianni was very much like. I want to keep playing the brand of football I want to play. I'm going to yeah. look for a guy who's aggressive, who puts, like, we're going into press coverage. We're going to yeah. get pressure and be like, aggressive. Like, he didn't, yeah. like, he was very much like, I'm going to do this process legit. I'm going to draft the guy that, I, how I want this football team to play defense. And I like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what this kid, this guy's going to be. He's our DC now. But, like, I like that idea that Sirianni had, like, values that he wanted on the defensive end. And when it's it, about the mindset. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll see. Um, We have talent on defense, so I don't think it's going to be, like, a crap shoot. I mean, yeah, we got out schemed in the Super Bowl and we lost by and three points. What can so. you do? Uh, Andy Third, Reed, third year class. head coach versus some dude who's been in the week for like what twenty five now. Yeah, like, like, like he's lot. like Andy Reed's coaching tree too. It's and like come he's on, like the enemy. Yeah, those two, the combination. Yeah. Did the enemy elite walk? He we'll, went we'll to, get we'll get to the enemy yeah, in a little bit yeah, in this episode. We'll get to that eventually. Yeah. So otherwise, Eagles Super Bowl or bust. It'll be really interesting to see how they flesh out their roster though, because there's so much talent mm-hmm. there and they have a lot of options that they can do. Just a dominoes game now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just gotta wait for them. I feel like the opposite of the Eagles is the Cowboys because the Eagles stock is rising <laughs> and the Cowboys, <laughs> Cowboys are plummeting. I mean, can, can we just talk about how Kellen Con? Wait, what's Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. <laughs> My bad. I don't know where I got that. Kellen Moore. The Cowboys. They needed to find a scapegoat for what happened. Oh, the offense is bad. Yeah. Blame the offensive the coordinator. coordinator. The Chargers made probably one of the best offseason moves in my opinion. They called him within. Less than a day, say, yo, yeah. get on Wasn't a plane. Within the, like, the couple minutes. minutes. Yeah. 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 Yo, get on a plane. We're hiring you. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and we talked right about there. that a couple uh, episodes ago. It's a great move. Kellen mm-hmm. Moore, like, the Dallas Cowboys have led the league in scoring the last yeah. two years. Like, with that with that team, Kellen with Moore, that quarterback. Now, now he's, now he's going to get Justin Herbert with yes. Keenan Allen, Mike Austin Williams, Eckler, Austin, Austin Eckler. And a, and a first-round pick that likely looks like it's going to a receiver. Yeah. yeah. Now, as long as Keenan Allen can stay healthy – I, he they might let him walk and keep Mike Williams or depending smart. on like or like depending on who gets like whatever contract yeah. type mm-hmm. thing. But th- now they have an option yeah. to then get a young receiver to pair with Herbert. Yeah, because also their wide out three Palmer, I think he's yeah, pretty, yeah. he's a good yeah. deep threat too. So they now have a horrifying offense <laughs> on us talking paper. about the Chargers. <laughs> and on top of that, their defense. I don't know. No, how- we can't get there yet. We're not on the Chargers. We're not on the Chargers. Right, my bad. We went on a ramble. Back to the Cowboys. Yeah, on the Cowboys' note, though, is that They're bad. losing Kellen Moore seems like an awful decision yeah. for that team. Um, And that's going to be something we're evaluating all year where we're like, Cowboys offense, what does it look like without Kellen Moore? I thought he was really good throughout the years. Um, 
Mike McCarthy calling plays. Yeah, no, literally. Big guy. And like the Eagles are, they're going out. They got Super Bowl. And they still have a lot of potential. The Cowboys, like I don't. Now I'm starting they're to be Super like, Bowl what? Shot. Was, what what do they have on their team that makes you like really excited? Like CD Lamb's cool, he's but he's not. Walks. He's but he's not close to a top six receiver, top seven receiver mm-hmm. in the league. So he's not good enough. Um, the running back situation is Zeke, who's a short down back, and Tony Zeke Pollard. Zeke did say he will take a pay cut because I guess well, they did it. God, yeah, because Zeke he doesn't do it. Well, it's, but Tony Pollard's a free agent. Yeah, they're gonna, so that's, that's, the that's what they're going to do. That Zeke's going to take less, so Pollard can get more. That's May- what I think they're doing. Maybe, but I mean, Dak Prescott. No one he, at this point, no one thinks he's like a top ten quarterback no. or anything. No. So it's not like he's good enough. So I think the Cowboys are kind of just in a spot where like. They're going to try to be mediocre next year and, like, mm-hmm. make the playoffs. I think the Cowboys are finally entering limbo. Where they're yeah. too good to tank, but they're not good enough no. to do anything. Yeah, I think that's... The only like, good thing on their team, I would say, is Micah and Trayvon just... He was he not, can, he's hit or miss. Yeah, like, he, he, he didn't play good this then, season. Yeah, you can flip a coin, and it's like, oh... And, of course, all Cowboys fans. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Oh, Trayvon's locking people up now. You don't know, blah, blah, blah. I think it's absolutely torched. And then Van Der Esch, I would say, a linebacker. And, and, yes, and then that's that's about it. I don't know anything else they have anymore. Yeah, there's just not like a there's not a crazy deep roster. Yeah. And, again, I could see them sneaking as a seven seed next year. Mm-hmm. Six seed. But yeah. losing the first round, and what is it all for? And they got this 26 overall pick where I just don't know where it's going to go because – I could see it going to the O line. I could see them drafting B. John Robinson. They I could draft- see them drafting anyone. Anywhere, I could see them drafting a wide receiver number two that they kind of really need. I could yeah. see them drafting another cornerback or defensive line. I could see them drafting almost anywhere on the team. Maybe yeah. another quarterback. Because they're not bad. They're not bad anywhere. They're just not they just, great not, or yeah, good. Exactly. Like I wouldn't say they're mid at every position, but like they they are mid. They are mid mm-hmm. or slightly above oh, average yeah. at every position. But that's not going to lose. Exactly. Game. Yeah. Exactly. I I think they're. Very far off from where they need to be, and they're going to lose guys. Except, like the Eagles are going to lose guys, but except they just that, don't well, have. That's expected every season. It's just yeah. how you rebuild after that. Yeah, and I'm not very confident they're going to be re- able to rebuild. Oh, Jerry so. Jones is the GM. Yep. Yeah, and we. I think this is McCarthy's last season on the Cowboys. Oh yeah, it's his head will roll if they don't. Do yeah, well. I thought it was going to be this season, but you they, know they. They went had a good year. They had a good year. I mean, they, they did. Yeah, they had a good losing year. to the losing to the they were the third best team in the NFC. Losing to the 49ers, 49ers mm-hmm. is not a bad look, no. and. It was the Giants who were also number four. So, yeah. like, at that point. So, like, yeah, I would say the Cowboys were the third best team in the NFC, which is not a bad place to be. Yeah. Um, and what will be interesting is when does the Dak Prescott leash, like, get – Finally. Be, it's like you just yeah. finally start to tighten that leash. Where yeah. Like, like where – really let him go for so long. Well, like, yeah. Like, he's – it's been clear the last two years that he's probably not the quarterback to win you a Super Bowl. But he's – like, it's like when do you get rid of the Dak Prescott experiment? When do you draft a guy – and set him for a year and say next season this is Dak's season to like kind of like show that like still I still have something left in me yeah. yeah I think it'd be fascinating if the Cowboys traded up for like an Anthony Richardson and sat him for Levis. a year Will Levis imagine they trade up to take CJ Stroud no they're not taking they, that'd, they that'd, that'd, that'd be a climb but Jerry Jones we know he is racist yeah he Ooh. does love his white people oh mm-hmm. Yeah, there pulls, was that pulls up the famous <laughs> exactly of him at the school. Are Bryce, CJ Stroud, and uh, Anthony Richardson all black quarterbacks? Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, um, that, yeah, that's anyway. <laughs> that's, just, that's just just how much yeah, NFL has changed. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just thinking about that, but um, the era of the pocket passer is over. Well, it's like you can't just be a pocket passer. Exactly. Yeah, you still have to be able to move a little bit. Yeah, and or run people over like you're a Ford F one fifty. Yeah, <laughs> Josh Allen, yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, I think the Cowboys, I don't know what they're looking to do next year. I, they're in limbo. Yep. Yep. They have That's the definition of limbo. I don't know what they want to they're do next year. Good. They're too Dare good. Dare I say tank. the Commanders pass them this season? I, do, I mean, if we can get to the Commanders right now, I mean, well, we well, I think we're, go right there. Yeah, do we want to go to the, skip we over the Giants? Go, against, the commanders. go over to the Commanders. Yeah. yeah, we'll just start with the Commanders. Do you think the Commanders are going to be better than the Cowboys? Dare I say, I think there is a possibility because they're getting, um, what's his name, Chase? No, it's not Young. You're Chase right. Young, Chase Young. Right? Yeah. they're getting him back. He's been injured, but hopefully he can be so healthy. So overrated. Hopefully he'll be healthy. We'll see what happens. And who's their quarterback that like kind of popped off the last game this Sam season? Howell. Sam Howell. Sam Howell. Oh, Howell. yeah, yeah. I forgot about Howell. Howell yeah. was showing some promise that last well, game. Well, again, it's one game where they don't have film on. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, but yeah. Howell has some potential. Commander Howell. Maybe if McLaurin can, you know, actually be a true wideout one this season. I feel so bad for Terry. He has the yeah. most, I think he has, like, the most or, like, close to, like, the most receiving yards in that draft class. Mm-hmm. And he's had, like, five quarterbacks yeah. going to him. And his, his wideout twos and threes are not bad at all. No. 
No. Yeah. I think the commanders are very interesting. They got get Eric B enemy. I mean, he was the guy, he was there the whole entire stint of Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. if there's anyone that could maybe like clean up some of the tape on yeah. like Sam Howell is good. I really like Sam Howell coming out of the draft. So like, yeah. I would love to see him just get the run for the year. And they're um, running back. Um, Brian Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a good. Yeah. yeah. They have, and they have Curtis Samuel too. Yeah. Um, they probably need to beef up their O line. Josh Dodson. Yep. Yeah. No. I think O-line, skill guys are fine. O line secondary. Yes. Well, and this is what makes the 16th pick very interesting because I think the Commanders are going to be in a situation where they don't draft anyone flashy at 16. They're no. going to draft like Death. an offensive tackle, mm-hmm. a defensive lineman, a linebacker. Yeah. Like they're just going to draft and that's like. That's fine because they yeah, have the no, skill guys. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting. Like their defense is not that good. Well, because it was really good the one year that it wasn't good. That was the 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 change from being like one of the best defenses in the league when Chase Young yeah. was a rookie to being like the worst defense in the year the year afterwards yeah. like was an absolute crazy shift. Exactly. I mean, granted, the team's in dumpster fire because of Dan Snyder right yeah, now. But, yeah. But, well, <laughs> maybe if Jeff Bezos buys it. Well, well Dan's, not let him. Dan's not letting. Dan's not letting. Now Bezos is bidding on another team. He's been, he's, he wants to buy the Seahawks. Oh my god. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would um, be crazy. That needs to be on by the commanders. This is getting off of football a little bit, but it's something to note. I think it's very interesting if the commanders were to get an owner switch because you see a situation like what happened with the Phoenix Suns where the new owner came in. Two days after new owner bought the team, um, Kevin Durant trade happens. Yeah. I think it would be very interesting if you got an owner in there who is not – Beth Bezos buys the team. Owner, like instantly it's spend the money, trade up in the draft, do exactly. something crazy, get the player you like, want. Get, like, get the fan base back into Yeah, it. luxury tax, like – yeah, push the cap, whatever, guaranteed contracts. Like, I think that's very interesting. And a team like the Commanders who haven't – Could do that. Who have been very cheap, have a crappy stadium. People don't really want to play for them. They have a yeah. terrible history. They've, they've ruined their fan base that used yeah. to be one of the most loyal ones. Like, yeah. yeah. I think it's very fascinating if the Commanders were to get a new owner yeah. um, and what their outlook could be. Because, again, they have people in decent spots. I think Ron Rivera um, has been a River decent Hope coach. <laughs> but I think what would be very interesting is Rivera has a bad year. Commanders don't play well. Eric Bieniemy upgrades, upgrades the head coach yeah. instead, like an internal promotion. I think that's what becomes the that's, becomes that's the, what it like. becomes the head coach for the Reds. Uh, Commanders. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> wow. I watched the football team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a throwback, Jesus. <laughs> um, and then, so I think the Commanders have a very interesting offseason where they're just going to kind of like try to become better. But yeah. we'll see. I think. I think the way to go is Sam Howell for the entire year yeah, because you got to ride with Howell. because they. Cut Carson Wentz, and then you've got, yeah, um, Heineke. Heine, which who isn't good? Well, okay, he's got that dog in him, though. You don't get it, Justin. Yeah, he's got the dog. It in doesn't him. matter. He's got that. Are dog you good or are you not good? He's got that dog in him. Do you throw one <laughs> touchdown and two interceptions every game? Yes, but he wins. <laughs> well, I think what they'll probably end up doing is they'll probably start Heineke for a while. He'll play like no. one game. They'll put in Howell, or Howell's going to take the job in OTAs. It's going to be one of the other. Yeah, something. I just think – I think the move is you've got – I agree Sam, with you that yeah. Sam Howell should be the one starting. I don't know if they'll do that. Because I think you have an argument if you're the commanders where you go, all right, we got Jahan Dotson, we got Terry McLaurin as wide receivers. That's a pretty good core. Curtis as well. Curtis, Curtis Samuel running back out of the backfield. Brian Robinson, you've got a very interesting yeah. skill group there. Curtis Samuel's a wide receiver. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, he runs yeah. the ball a lot then, right? Yeah, well, he's, he gets, he's like, well, he's like they, kind of like a Debo role. Yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Um. So you got the, those three guys who are really good. Brian Robinson running back. Um, Sam Howell. And then you just got to figure out the offensive line a little bit. Offensive line, secondary. They like, got to work with their defensive mm-hmm. depth and stuff like that. But you can draft. Yeah. They but have also, the pieces. They just need to slowly put it together. together. This yeah. season, I don't think they're going to win anything crazy. Maybe they, no. maybe they might sneak they, in. They could, they could be one of those surprises like the Giants yeah. where they just like they put it together and like mm-hmm. win a playoff game. They can be a sneak in. But this is their season where they maybe make some moves during the season for unhappy players on other teams, bring them in, yeah. and then rebuild, slowly rebuild, get some better draft picks. They just need, yeah. 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 And then we'll see. Well, I think, like, you got Brian Robinson, who's young. You've got Terry McLaurin, who's not old. Jahan Dotson, who's young. Sam Howell, who's young. You can just kind of you run it. Young core. You can run yeah. it with the offense this year, not be great, get another player, get some O-line depth the next year, and then you're look- this year is a development year, another year. So I think the they command – yeah, I think the commanders are in a solid spot. I don't think they have anything to be like. And it's kind of about. it's kind of funny to think how like everyone's like, oh, Cowboys this, Cowboys that. Now it's the other three NFC East teams on the rise, and the Cowboys, Cowboys just plummeted. Yeah, I mean, you could make an I could hear an argument 
for the Cowboys finishing last in the division. I also yeah. can too. Now, I don't think it'll happen. I think no. they'll end up being better than one of the teams. Mm -hmm. And I think I would take them over the Commanders. But I, if, if you told me at the end of the year that the Cowboys went 6-11, and 11, 17 games, 6-11, and 11, I wouldn't be shocked. And yeah. that's just how it goes. But the Giants yes. are a team that's on the up and up, up yes. and up. Yes. Um, and it's Danny the, the Brian, Dable, Brian Dable effect. Um, that was a lot. I know. <laughs> so, for, so for context, what Raj just said, he's, he was like, oh, Daniel Jones is supposedly going to get paid $45 million. So that was actually a straight up lie <laughs> that was so that was sent out by his former uh, like agents or whatever that represented him. So then he switched agents right before this contract, mm -hmm. and they I think basically they got pissed and they tried to just le like the, leak information to make him look worse <laughs> when they were just like, oh yeah, he wants forty five million, and it's like, what's your source of that? It's like, oh, that's my opinion. And then everybody just ran with yeah. it. Dude, the memes were so unbelievable. <laughs> everybody just ran with it. Yeah. So there's no shot he's going to get like $45 million. I think he, like, he might get something around 40 um, probably. But for me personally, like, if he's going to be asking for too much, the Giants can find, like, we can, like, tread water and find a quarterback yeah. for the future. Yeah. Like, because my thing is, like, as much as Daniel Jones, like, yes, he did lead this team. He did do this. If he's not going to be a team player type thing, because it's similar to the Jalen Hurts situation, except he's worse than Jalen Hurts. Like, significantly. Exactly. So, it's like, when, when I say, like, oh, he needs to take a team-friendly deal, it's because we can cut it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, what? Like, there's there might be other teams that like would pick him up, but Derek like, he's not Giants. gonna he's not gonna go to a better situation. Than no, what the Giants are this is be. his best option because right the Giants are gonna be going on the upswing. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Barkley, it's kind of the same thing because like, what are you gonna go to like a worse team for more money? Yeah, and then like ruin your career. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of the it's, that's like the whole thing there. Also, like it's like if Daniel Jones is to do a contract, you could be like, we'll trade for Aaron Rodgers. We'll go get Derek Carr. Like you could. We'll you could, go get Hendon Hooker. You could always yeah. threaten Danny Dimes with, okay, you want $35 million? Guess what? We don't 40. want to pay $45. Well, if you took $35 million, I would love yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, if you actually wanted this much money, we got the draft right here. That's the, that's my whole thing. And again, I would love for Daniel Jones to come back yeah. on a great contract mm -hmm. that works for him, that works for the team, and for him to be the quarterback for the next four or five years. Yeah. I'd love that. I would mm -hmm. absolutely love that. But if he's going to be apparently a schmuck about it, yeah. then – Wow. Yeah, exactly. But, for sure. um, but, and it's kind of the same thing with Barkley. Cause like he said, he wanted to be a giant for life, but then it's like, actually very recently they said they were coming to a lot closer. Uh, Cause I mean, like that's just how like contract. Works. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, obviously you present like way higher than you actually. Obviously Saquon Barkley is worth $50 million. A year. I mean, of course Sorry, yeah. Yeah, he's worth 300,000. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like every single second. But um, so yeah, I think they're coming a lot closer to a deal and stuff like that. Cause I think, cause Saquon's 26 right now, I believe. Yep. And 27 is kind of a magic number for running backs where uh -huh. they tend to decline very sharply after mm -hmm. 26. Yeah. No, after 27, I believe. But if he can then, if he is able to like convince the Giants that it's like, hey, I'm not going to fall off, which yeah. I think because him, he's been through injuries, he's been through rehab, but he came back from that and looked arguably better. Yeah. Yeah. Because he like his rookie year was absolutely his best year. Mm -hmm. He had two thousand all purpose yards. He was crazy. Yeah. But he didn't run like a true running back yet. He was very bouncy to the outside. Yep. He was always just like, you know, big plays, whatever. Stiff arm. Yeah. It was like stiff arm. It was very flashy plays. Yeah. But this year he was much more like he would still have those flashy yep. plays, but he was very like okay, between the tackles, I'm going to get four mm -hmm. yards in this run. Yep. And just, like, I'm going to drop my shoulder, pick my legs up so that way no one rolls up my ACL and just get the four yards. Yep. Run. And just keep hammering away at that. And then it was, like, every once in a while, he'll just break, like, a, like a 20 or 30-yard run. And it's, like, just, like, a great run. Yep. He really he needs to keep the defense focused on him. So he looks a lot better running back-wise. Mm -hmm. Still a great, like, out of the out of the backfield receiver. Yep. Um, so I think he is worth a lot. I don't know because I think the franchise tag right now for running backs, I believe, is around ten million. Mm -hmm. So that's probably baseline what you're starting. Yeah, with, if you're the Giants, like that's going to be the baseline contract. Yep. I think he was asking somewhere between like sixteen, seventeen, something like that. So if you can find a, like a middle ground of like twelve, thirteen, even thirteen and a half million, something mm -hmm. like that, like that's a really good contract. Yeah, because if you could keep those two together, they're both still young. You still have a lot of time with them. 
And with the defense, I mean, our average age, I think, is like 20. Yeah, you're six or something like that. Yeah. It's like stupidly young on the defense. Yeah. Dexter Lawrence, they've been talking about giving him an extension because they probably will pick up his yeah. fifth-year option just to like see how he does again. But I mean, we got a lot of young players. Kevin Thibodeau been, was a really good freshman. Thibodeau freshman really year, showed yeah. out, yeah. And I think a lot of the guys that like are some of them. I think we might have some guys walk, but like they're nobody like really significant kind of thing. Thank God, Kenny Galladay is gonna get cut. Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. He's finally gone. We paid him $36 million. The nightmares are over. The nightmares are over. He's finally going to be gone. We're going to get rid of that awful contract and actually have like money, the second or third most cap space in the league or something like that. Go out, get some receivers. 25 feels like a guaranteed receiver pick for the Giants. I feel like it's 25 is going to be whatever. If so, it's either whatever receiver falls or if for some reason all of those receivers get picked. Then it's going to be whatever best available defenseman. Yeah, probably will then end up mm-hmm. falling because they. What people were saying, it's like, oh, if the receivers are taking. Are I don't taking, know. I don't know if the receivers are going to really go high in this draft with who's picking. So. That's the thing is that I'm hoping that we'll get somebody like a Jordan Addison mm-hmm. or somebody like the Ohio State guy, Jackson like, Smith and Jigba, yes, him or even Bo- the Boston College or TCU receivers. Yep. Like all of them are very like. They're all very good in their own unique ways, yeah. very different receivers, and I think uh, like Dable can work with any of them. Yeah, especially because like the Giants' receiving core is so bad that exactly. it's like it's like you can add anybody. Well, we need speed and we need a <laughs> jump ball catcher, yeah, and we, we need, need this, we need route that, running, yeah, we yeah. need everything. Yeah, we, um, need, we need damn near everything. I feel like Jordan Addison is the most well-rounded receiver that you guys yes. could get. Where it's just like he does That's a lot of good stuff, pretty well. A lot of a lot of stuff pretty well, and I think like just having a good, yeah. all, like nice, solid, good. Yeah, receiver. he's definitely good all around. I do, I do like the TC receiver just because he's a big, tall yeah. like, receiver. For the I, inaccurate Daniel Jones passes. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> For when he's, like, throwing a, a duck out the Wait, backfield. Is what? Debo still beefing with the Niners? No. No. Okay, never mind. That, that was literally just for contracts. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I don't know. If he was still beefing with them. No. Because <laughs> my thing is, like, some people are saying. Don't make Peter have hope. <laughs> no, no, no. So, what I actually, I did see this recently, and it was, um. Because I think DeAndre Hopkins right now is looking for a trade out of Yeah, he's, he will get traded this year. He right? will get traded somewhere. And someone was like, oh, like, how would he go to the Giants? And like, incredible receiver. I want a guy that's going to be on the team for a Yeah, while. I agree. I don't want, like, some Band-Aid on this. If we were, like, the Chiefs or the Eagles, where you yeah. can just randomly add DeAndre Hopkins, yeah, I would add yeah. something like that. But I'm not going to add him if I'm still trying to build off this team. The, the Giants are not looking to win the Super Bowl this upcoming year. No, they're, they're looking like, to just consistently be a playoff. Team. Yeah, so like make make another playoff game, and I don't. I think Giants have two, two, three years down the line. You're starting to think Super Bowl. Yeah. And DeAndre Hopkins is getting old, yeah, so I, w- I wouldn't. Yeah, because because our number one priority receiver, then it's probably interior O line depth and some better guys in there, and then it's linebackers, corners. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's and, all we need. Yeah, and I think there are clear holes in the roster. You try to address them through the draft yeah. and pick up some free agents, but just again develop throughout the year. Yeah. Um, you really need a lot of like I don't want to say maturity, but you really need a lot of like maturity and like ease of working with Daniel Jones and Saquon yes. Barkley. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. if they want the team to be good and Dayball to be able to do what he can do as an offensive as offensive mind as a head coach, yeah. You need them to be like I'm Saquon sorry. to be like yeah. I'll take a little less money than maybe I want. And Daniel Jones would be like, I'll take the money that I'm actually deserved. And I'm not going to try to overinflate it because then you'll have a decent, good quarterback, a great running back for however long he'll be good for. And then you can actually spend on a wide receiver who's a free agent and spend on a, a first round pick on a receiver. And suddenly you have a good receiving core and then you can work with that as exactly. offense and then improve the defense. So, I mean, this is like the, the age old, like Tom Brady takes less money in, um, in, um, what's it called? In New England, when you have a lot less money, you have a lot more range to do things with. So I think like the Giants really could benefit from that. So, um, Jacob, join us. We need your thoughts. Yeah, this is Jacob, everybody. (laughs) Um, So you think you think it's the Cowboys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cowboys are just definitely going to be better. But okay, next two years. Yes. I'd still probably say the Cowboys. So you're, ah, wow! So you're you're, you're high on the you're on, you're yeah. high on the Cowboys roster. Well, I'm high on the Cowboys roster. We're also pretty low on the um, Commanders. Just as an organization. Trust in the enemy. Trust in the enemy. No, trust in whatever the new person. They that's just have the organization. Trust in Elon Musk. He's gonna buy. They're trust such a Musk. horrible organization. So. 
Because we we see a world in which like we wouldn't be shocked if the Cowboys finished last in the division. Not saying that I would place money on that to happen, but there, it's fine. I if I saw the Cowboys go six and eleven, I wouldn't be shocked. Because you're gonna have the Giants and the Eagles. Yeah. And that's kind of going to be a dogfight between the Cowboys and yeah. Commanders. And it's, those two are probably just fighting for that seventh seed. Yeah. I think if Sam Howell's good Sam at all. Sam Howell's a dog, yes! <laughs> Sam Howell yeah. is hit. Yes. He was supposed to be good, but no, I can't say that. What do you mean you're supposed to be good? He didn't play! That last game of the season, yeah, he, but he played also, pretty well. Yeah, like, fell off like, when it came time for the draft. Like, he just didn't get the picks high. Like, this guy thinks Bryce Young's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks Bryce Young can see over his own line. <laughs> Bryce Young is like what? Five, five, ten, five ten, ten. Yeah, we're not, talk- we're not talking about Bryce Young. We're talking about the <laughs> NFC. We're going to get wasted in Houston, anyways. It's we're not talking about Houston. <laughs> no, we're well, people are saying that Anthony Richardson could somehow go ahead of Bryce. Young. We're not talking about <laughs> Anthony Richardson. <laughs> Anthony Richardson to the Cowboys. <laughs> anyway, um, so as like as a whole, like when you look at the NFC East, where do you see them being division wise, like in the league? Do you see them being one of the more competitive division again? Do you see them taking a step back, like? Where do you, what do you see for the this year coming up for the, from that SEs? I feel like they're going to take a step back just mm-hmm. because they had, what, three teams in the championship yeah. games? Like, yeah. that's insane. Like, it's going to be – it's definitely going to be a very interesting year. Uh, I know that's probably the least hot take ever. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, just the way I'm – Breaking thinking, news, Peter ooh, thinks that this I mean, upcoming NFL season interesting. will be interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy crap. I know, right? But – um. Yeah, so I think the Cowboys definitely going to take a step back. So that that's going to be big for the NFC uh, East as a whole. Yeah, with the Cowboys, they're going to take a step back because Cal Moore is not going to be there. If the Giants can step up as the Cowboys step back, I think that'll be like good for the division to really like stay competitive. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because they're not really going to have that like one, two, three. Yeah, the division as a whole might take a step back, which would probably be good for those on top of the division. So yeah, they can kind of start beating the crap at those on the bottom of the division, but we will see. And I mean, the the Giants haven't beat the Cowboys in so long, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants went like 15-2 and two and lost to the Cowboys. Like, played play them in the first round of playoffs. Play, yeah, they, well. no, no, but they would beat them in the playoffs. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but they would just, they would find a way to lose to them the regular season twice. They yeah. would absolutely find a way to do that. I'm kind of getting like NFC North vibes with like it being like kind of more of a top-heavy thing now, yeah. where it's like the Packers and the Vikings. Eagles, yeah. Giants, like kind of like that comparison, and then and the Vikings were frauds too. Well, yes, <laughs> whatever. Well, back, let's say back when the Bears were really good. Yeah, with, uh, when like Rogers was there, but then it was like a one year where Jay Cutler was wild. Good. I know, but like that's what we're saying is like you have the two like really good teams, yeah. like, and the then you have like that one thirteen that's like okay, yeah, and then you got yeah. the terrible one at the bottom. <laughs> then you got Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think NFC East will. I think it'll be a division where you see like. T- the the Eagles kind of going on a on a second I'm year sure, yeah. on a second year run where it's like oh man can they get back to the Super Bowl um and I think you're gonna have the Giants kind of be like oh can we pick the flashy Giants yeah, to like, exactly. like upset the could, Eagles yeah. like oh like yeah, um they're having another great year but I think there'll be a lot more pressure on the organization they played with house money yeah. um this year and I could see the Giants like not having as good of a season I mean they had a really oh, good yeah, season yeah. so they, I, could, I could definitely see them just like randomly taking a step back because that's just the New York Giants yeah. they will always do some crazy stuff like that yeah but yeah i get that exactly yeah i think big here is like if you're a giants or commanders fan i think you really just want to see growth from exactly. your quarterbacks from your skill players like you just want to see some improvement especially if you're a commanders fan where you have a new offensive coordinator coming in like you just really need to see growth even if your team like has a worse record at least see like where you something see is that going potential and you see that's like okay this team can develop and can continue to yeah be better. Because I don't, none of these teams in the division right now are better than the Eagles. Again, mm-hmm. that I mean that could change a lot based on injuries, based on just like weird factors. But yeah. right now, none of the three teams are good enough. The mm-hmm. Are good enough to beat the Eagles. So I don't think it's bad to be like, oh yeah, we're a little bit worse, and we're going to just get a good draft pick and like regroup next year because a team like the Commanders might be interested in some of the top uh, quarterbacks next year. So might be in the Commanders' best interest to be bad and go get Drake May, Caleb Williams, or someone like that. Don't worry. <laughs> so I think I think that's the option there. And for the Cowboys, just you're a Cowboys fan, man. You gotta tread water. They're in limbo. Like it's just They're absolute limbo. spaced out, nowhere to go. Yeah. Um They're a mess. Do we have any other final thoughts on the NFC East? I say just a final ranking. Final ranking, all right. And like picking like, right now, no draft, nothing. Yeah. Can okay, we change so, these predictions? Okay, wait, wait. wait. So like just the picking... division, like order. Okay, like, so right now, yeah. right now, what are they? For okay. me, 
Eagles, Giants, Commanders, Cowboys. I think still right now, I would I would still go Eagles, Cowboys, Giants, Commanders. Okay. Still right now. Yeah. I would still do that. I'm doing Eagles, I Giants. I like being the underdog. Give Eagles, me... Eagles, Eagles, Giants, Cow- Eagles, want... Giants, Cowboys, nah, Commanders. Make the Giants Commanders last. over Keep Cowboys. Keep down, guys. <laughs> what? Commanders over Cowboys is insane. Listen, I, I don't think it's a crazy take when you, like, Commanders were seven and eight and nine. Seven and ten, they were they like they were decent last year, and they were doing the Carson Wentz, uh, Taylor Heineke, Ring Around the Rosie. They had Brian Robinson got shot, Um, (laughs) like um, they had like some stuff going on, and now they get Dan Snyder's existence. Uh, And they had hoop pipes breaking on like the field. And unless you're one of the people, uh, see the. NFLPA team reports that just came out. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. The commanders yeah. were dead last. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Did you see yeah. that the Cardinals had to pay for their own meals? Yeah, yes. That's, that's, that's wild. That's, <laughs> that's actually crazy. Yeah. That's discussion for another video. <laughs> that's another video. Um, but I think um, unless you're in a small population that believes Eric Bieniemy actually just isn't a good coach and that's why he didn't get hired, then their offense is going to be a lot better. I so I expect Sean McCoy is smoking. But yeah, I, I don't know what's up with so, that. So yeah, unless you're part of that very small population, I believe the Cowboys offense is going to be, and not Cowboys, the Commanders offense is going to be a lot better this year. And if you're a little better than last year, you're you got a winning record, and the NFC as a whole is still not very good. I could very well see a possibility where three teams from the NFC East get in again. Yeah, because what do you like? The Cowboys easily made it last year. The, the Eagles easily made it last year, and the Giants. Had to win a couple they of games late, in. but like, like they were what they were the fifth seed, sixth seed. Yeah, like, and they were they were doing they were good the whole entire. Up. Yeah, and yeah, so I think I easily see a situation where like you could have three teams playing on um, conference or divisional weekend again, just because of how bad the NFC South is. Yeah, pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Not wait to get to that. So bad. Five. And it's yeah. crazy because um, like a few years ago, that was the NFC South was the one. That yeah, the yeah, I think. The NFC East took a lot of uh, like a lot a lot of digs when um, the Eagles won the division and lost, got killed by Tampa, yeah. which was last they year. Like, oh, this NFC division is so bad. And meanwhile, the it NFC the NFC bad, East had a, a fantastic record outside of division. Like they it was were just they were beating the crap out of each other in, in division. division. Yeah, like yeah. it was they were like doing so well outside of their division. So I think like it shows you how quick things can turn around. I mean, it was one year the Giants did beat the Cowboys that year. The yeah. dude sat on the football after fumbling it. Oh, the first yeah. <laughs> I remember that now. Um, but yeah, it's a situation where things change really quickly. Eagles go to the Super Bowl. Dallas like makes wins a playoff game for the first time in forever, and oh my God, and the Giants out of nowhere with Brian Dable become a really good team. And the Commanders were, I mean, I thought the Commanders going into the year were going to be a, like a bottom like five team in the league, and they were. No, they, they were, were solid. They were, they were mid. And they beat the Eagles when the Eagles were undefeated. I mean, it's not yeah. like not an easy feat. Commanders teams on Monday night versus undefeated teams. Yeah. Who know? <laughs> Specifically undefeated teams from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yes. Undefeated teams from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Any closing thoughts on the NFC East? No. The most exciting division in football. Yeah. Like, yeah. Actually. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please be, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. We have content like this and keep following our series about all the uh, NFL divisions as we go into the draft and even some post-draft depending on how long the series goes on. Um, We'll see you next time.